everything. I never worked for money. I always worked for the challenge. I made money. This isn't the only opportunity. This is just the first of many. Uh, when you respect the craft and you put the work in, know that you'll get your opportunity. And then if they want me, they want me. If they don't want me, you know, they're stupid. No. <laughs> Pity the man who walks alone. How can he take care of himself? When you partner with God and he partners you with somebody else, you're gonna be okay. Acting to me has been a, a godsend in a way. You know, it really brought me to where I am today and I feel comfortable with myself, comfortable with the world, comfortable with people. Not that I ne never was, but it, it made me realize this. Mm -hmm. It showed me that this gave me the opportunity to grow as a man, as a person, to be aware of my surroundings, to be aware of my space. I recommend acting not just to act, but to use in life. To develop. In life, just to be a person. You don't need anybody to make you happy. You have to find happiness in yourself. That's your responsibility. And a relationship should be someone who does not upset the happiness that you have in yourself. So that, you know, you're not, because you're putting unnecessary pressure on the other person that's, that's, not, that's not good. And you're absolving yourself also the responsibility of making yourself happy. So I think that, you know, that sort of, you know, good lines like that makes it easier because if you can love yourself, then you have room to love someone else. But if you don't love yourself and really enjoy being with yourself and working through yourself, then you're not gonna have good room for anybody else. Anytime there's a transition in our lives, a lot of times stuff from the past can bubble back up. And it's a great time to actually have that opportunity to get curious about where I have hurt and where I'm still holding. If you don't have to have a reason to go to therapy, you can if you want, but you also can just say, I just want to learn more about myself. Like, I want to talk to someone about my life story. I want I want to have someone ask me questions that make me think, and and I, I want to be building more about my understanding of who I am and who I want to be and what my patterns are to get in my way. So, uh, you know, with couples therapy, I often say, you know, Going when things are okay is a really great place to start because it means that you're in this maintenance mode. Like you don't you don't wait till a car breaks down on the highway to take it to get fixed. You take your car in for regular checkups. Um, we do that with doctors for our body. I mean, that's kind of what therapy can be. Sometimes when you're writing for stand-up, you think something is so clever. You're like, this is going to be amazing. This is a game changer. When they see this joke, and then I usually have written like another joke next to it that I'm like, oh, we're going to find a bigger a word for this, but this isn't not going to be, but it'll, it'll do. And then I go to a mic and the thing that I thought was going to be brilliant. <laughs> And then the thing that I was like, this is filler. Everyone's like, that's amazing. <laughs> and you're like, oh no, oh no. So um, yeah, that's what I like about it is like you, I hate and I love it is like, I have no control over it. Screenwriting is very much a science and it takes time and you gotta be easy and gentle with yourself because that might take a little longer depending on where you are with your writing skills. Um, and I just didn't realize, I think maybe they told us in film school, but I was just hard headed and didn't listen and was just like, you know, I just, I just made this amazing feature. I just wrote it and it's good. No, you vomited a draft that needs a lot of work and is horrible. Okay, so I have um, have learned over the years that, um, you know, with writing, it takes a lot of pruning and it takes a lot of rewriting um, and a lot of getting it right, a lot of perfecting, because Hollywood, unfortunately, can be very unimaginative. So, um, so you need to make sure that it's spelled out on you the page. You have your world. Yes. No matter what the industry is selling you, mm -hmm that there's definitely two distinct Hollywoods. Ooh, okay, okay. There's, there's white Hollywood and there's black Hollywood. It's okay to approach it 
from a perspective that you are going to break down barriers regardless of what you're challenged by, please keep that in mind. Keep mm -hmm. that in your heart. Mm -hmm. um, but just know that the two do exist. And so a lot of the opportunities that you'll see your white counterparts getting will be a lot harder for you to get. Mm -hmm. And just because, you know, a lot of places are selling quote unquote diversity now, a lot of it's just talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you have to really get into the underbelly of what's really going on and surround yourself with good people. If you're doing comedy and you really want to do drama, then you should take an acting class with a really great drama teacher. Somebody who really will take you to that other place. If you're doing drama and you want to do comedy, you should go to an acting teacher that is the comedy acting teacher. You want to start exploring that other um, area, tapping into, oh, I want to, you know, I'm tired of being the victim. Now I want to be the bad guy. I find that a lot of people stay stuck, not because they're tired of it, but they're afraid to change. They don't want to mess with anything that, that made them successful. I think as an actor, you should always challenge yourself. It's funny because in these COVID times when you're not going out and seeing people, we have been so comfortable together and gotten probably closer than ever. Like life passes you by, passes you by and and you never spend enough time with those people you love. Even if you live with them, yes. you never spend that quality, quality time. Like those sweet little moments. These months have been great because we have those moments. That's we beautiful. watch the sunsets, you know, oh. together. And I, I feel like, okay, we have spent that quality time together because after all, those are the, the moments of your life. I'm able to be aware of what's happening today, in many cases, is a result of something that happened several hundred years ago. And you can see the evolution of that, that we're still dealing with, that we're still trying to, you know, um, one of the things, one of the uh, characters in volume one is Angela Davis. And speaking with her through the megaphone and the audience, and one of the things that I'm taking you into a, a 60s rally as, as uh, Angela Davis, and saying, you know, and, and uh, that women should be paid the same as, as men. And you can hear the audience still roar because we're still dealing with that today. You know, the whole history of our people is so mixed uh, and, and, and often so much has been left off the wagon, so to speak. But uh, what I want to do is bring new information or reintroduce old information so this shows the worthy of us the worthiness of people of color that has nothing to do with our condition of, of, of uh, being in a society where uh, we are always uh, struggling against an oppressive force what do you love about acting the unpredictability of every day with material and how every day you have to face the bullet, meaning you're going in and if you're working, I'm working on Monday on a TV show. I'm feeling the same way I felt 20 years. You know, anybody that denies that it's not crazy making is, it's not true. But you go in and it's like adrenaline and it's fabulous and you're doing what you love, which is breaking down a script, which is going in, which is working with other people, just bringing me into the moments and uh, just enjoying breaking it down. As a single parent, one of the things that was very important for me to keep me sane was to have my acting classes. So I had an acting class every week to go to. I had to find a balance. I had to be able to be mommy to my kid, take care of her, have her go to school, and then take care of myself. So what I would do was, in order to keep my creativity flowing, I am managing my time very well. I make sure that when my daughter's in school, I'm utilizing that time to work on my creative stuff, to go on auditions. I find that instead of it being a limitation, it actually frees you up to do more. Usually when I'm doing pre-production or development, especially with like narrative projects, um, which just means scripted work, 
I am trying to get into that world as much as possible. So I am researching, I am listening to music that is in that era or that time period or of that culture. I'm listening to news um, outlets. I'm listening to documentary, I've been watching documentaries because I'm really trying to get myself into that world as much as possible so that I can really make it as authentic as possible. I'm talking to people who are from that culture or from that world so that I can really direct as much as possible like an accurate portrayal of the people. But I also create a soundtrack for that particular project because I'm like, this is the music that's really in this world. So I'm just trying to feed myself. It's like, I'm like a, a rapper, like training for a battle or like, a you know, Rocky, who's like in the throes of it. So I, I consider myself like almost like an athlete when it comes to directing. Cause it's like, I gotta just keep feeding myself with as much of that world that I'm trying to create. You know, if, I, if you're my friend, I'm going to protect you. If, mm -hmm. if, if you're my friend, I'm going to I'm going to extend grace to you. I'm going to, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to go, OK, Candido is having a bad day today. No worries. I'll see you tomorrow because you're my friend. But yeah. we're not taught that as little kids, unless you come from a home where they really emphasize on how to be friends, how to treat people with respect and love and not judge them severely, but to understand people have bad days and you know, you work, you work around that, but that's not, you know, uh, uh, unfortunately it becomes a me, 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 it's all about me. Listen, you're not servicing me, so yes. I'm out of here. I'm gonna, you know, we're the disposable uh, culture. We dispose everything. We don't, you know, I didn't like that. I didn't like how he looked at me. So therefore I don't want to be in a relationship with him. Or well, I don't want him to be my friend anymore because, you know, he said something hurt my feelings and that's it. Instead of, you know, saying, you know what? I'm committed to this friendship. I just want you to know, Candido, you hurt my feelings. When you were mm -hmm. making fun of me, I took it personal. So I, I just mm -hmm. want to let you know that whether, you know, whether you say anything or not, I, I just want to bring it to your attention and then move on. First, you have to accept that you need help. Right. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Then go look for um, a therapist. And the therapist will also help you find a, a psychotherapist. And there's two different ways because the therapist can talk about it, but they can't give you, if you need medication, can't prescribe it. they can't prescribe it. The reason I tell people when other people get about, oh, I don't believe in medication, I said, the only reason I believe in medication is because I went through anxiety and I remember that I didn't want to feel this way, but my anxiety took over so much that I couldn't think it clearly. So as soon as I was put on medication, then my therapy, my therapist started teaching me cognitive strategies and, and self-talk. And then I, I was told, go into this therapy group because then you will, will learn cognitive behavior and why the self-talk and the catastrophizing and all the sabotage and things that you're doing that is creating the anxiety and the reason you're feeling anxious and then you go into depression is because you don't understand what's happening so you get depressed and then you get depressed and you don't want to talk to anybody we did a couple of takes the way it was written and then we did a couple versions or a few versions of it improvised. He was like, hey, I was going to say something and you say something. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to improv with Al Pacino. Sure, let's do it. And so one thing that I loved about Al was that I never once felt that he showed up with ego and pride. He showed up to the set to work as if it was the very first acting gig he ever got. And I had met other actors that had not been in the business that long, and they weren't so kind. You know, they had their stuff. But this man, who, you know, you you could think that he might not, he might be this kind of person. He was not so kind. And I, I said to myself, you know what? You stick to who you are. You be kind. Stay humble. Lou, I'm shooting live, and Lou is crying, and I mean. Bookers are coming out of his nose. I mean, he's, I mean, Lou Diamond Phillips is one of the best actors alive. He is fantastic. And people don't realize um, how good he is. And um, 
And then as we got closer and closer, he sort of ran out of fluid. So I learned that we should shoot the close-up first and then go back. If you want to be a writer, you have to write. I see so many people who come to me and they say, hey, I have a script and I want to do the script and it's their passion project. And I get that. But you have to keep writing. You can't stop. People think, think that they can get away with one or two projects or even three. I wrote a dozen before, you know, I just kept writing and writing and writing and writing. And also you can't be precious about your writing. You have to understand that um, there are people who will buy things for certain reasons and it has nothing to do with your passion necessarily or your voice. Um, if you go work for somebody else, you have to have, um, be able to emulate their voice for their series so that you can do their show, not your show, their show.